right, welcome to part three of our build series. Today we're gonna to work on the XY axis. Okay, so this is the idler mount. You'll want to have an M3 by 30 screw. And then you take your pulley, make sure that it has the three millimeter bearing. And you'll slide one over the bolt. And you leave a little bit sticking out. And we're gonna add two washers in between the pulleys. So this is kind of difficult to do. There's one, two, and then we need to add in the other pulley. Okay, and now that this whole thing is assembled, we can tighten it up. And this doesn't need to be super tight, just snug so that it doesn't come loose. When there's a captured nut on the side. I've got the stepper motors mounted. I've got the pulleys mounted. And I'm going to go ahead and insert the rods on the uh, pulley mount. And when I do that, I'm going to push it through and leave a little bit stick it out like that. And uh, we'll put that on, we'll put our bearing on, like this, and then we'll insert the whole thing into the stepper mount. And so when you're putting this together, all the socket head cap screws should be facing outward. And so that one was a little bit too tight, I'm going to loosen it up. It should insert like this. There we go. And then it's just going to slide right in to the side, making sure everything's lined up. Okay, that's one side. You want to make sure that the wires are sticking out towards the inside of your frame. And now we'll do the right side. Okay, then we'll go around and tighten up the clamps on the rods. So now we're going to put together the Y carriage. So this is one that I already assembled. I made a few changes on, on the Y carriage. First of all, I got rid of all the heat inserts. Um, everything is nut captured now. So there's a captured nut um, holding in the pulley here, the tooth pulley. And there's a captured nut inside here holding in the smooth pulley. Uh, there's also captured nuts to hold on the, the end cap like this. So there's four more captured nuts here and those all slide in this way. So I'll go ahead and assemble. This is the one, one side. I'll assemble the other one. So I'll start off. The easiest way to do this is to get a nut and thread it on to one of the bolts this and then use this to place the nut down to the hole. Now 
And this is going to be the uh, tooth pulley. You want to make sure that your pulleys have the 3 millimeter hole and not the 5 millimeter bearing hole there. And you can use your M3 by 20 and stick it in from the top. There's a counter bore hole there for you. Put your pulley in and then use your Allen wrench to help skewer the pulley. And you should be able to see that that's tightening up. You don't need this extra tight, it just needs to be snug to where it's not going to fall apart. So that's the tooth pulley is in. We'll flip it over and for this part you'll need a set of uh, tweezers and we're going to put this is kind of difficult to see. There's a little hole right in there. We're going to put the nut right in that hole. So I'll do my best to show this on camera. It's difficult to do. So it's going to go it's going to go right inside inside there. And it just drops right down in, and you want to keep it in this orientation while you're inserting the bearing. So, in the pulley. So you'll put the pulley in, and get your M3 by 20, and it goes in the counter bore hole. You may have to tilt it to get the nut to, to tighten up, and then that's it. So we've got both pulleys put in. Now we can worry about the clamps. And the clamps, we're going to do the same, use the same technique. We're going to thread, we're going to thread a nut onto a bolt. And then we're going to find our hole here on the end of our carriage, our Y carriage. And we're going to navigate that nut into the hole. And it takes some convincing sometimes but I found this is the easiest way to do it. And so that one is all the way in. And then you can come from the other side. So those were M3 by 20s that I used on the, the pulleys. These are M3 by 16. These don't need to be quite so long. So now we just need the captured nuts on the end. I'll show you where these go, but we won't install these until we get, a, get them on the uh, printer. So they just drop right down there and then you should be able to see the nut in there and then the bolt will go all the way through. Now that we have our Y carriages made up, we're going to go ahead and mount them to our uh, frame. They're going to slide right over these Y-axis bearings. When you're putting this on, there's two cutouts here with a tooth bearing. That faces the back of the printer, and the smooth bearing faces the front of the printer. And since I left these holes in the cap, that means we don't have to put the rods, the X-axis rods in just yet. So what we need are some M3 by 20 bolts. Those are going to go through the end cap, and we need some M3 nylock nuts and those are going to go in these little slots on the uh, on the edges. So I'm going to go ahead and install that. Okay, I got one the, uh, the bottom side done. Now I'm going to put the top side in. It helps if you let this rest face down. Then you can just kind of push the uh, lock nuts in there. And so I'm just going in a pattern, kind of like you tighten lug nuts on a car. I'm hopping around to make sure that I'm applying even torque. And so that's snug. Okay. And then I'm going to do the other side. So 
Today we're going to work on the x-axis carriage. So this is the main part of the carriage. This is a hybrid design between the original Hypercube and the Hevo. Um, we're going to put a few things together before we start getting everything assembled. There's a place for a, a M3 nut to go Make right sure here. that it's going in the right direction and not sideways. If you try to push it in sideways, you're going to have a very difficult time. So a pair of needle nose pliers will really help with that. And so that's put in. And then this is the belt clamp. And we're just going to position that over the top of where we inserted the nut and use an M3 by 10. No, an M3 by 8 uh, cap screw. And we're just going to get that snug so that when we run our belts, we'll be able to tighten it down later. Then if we turn this over, we'll be able to mount our hot end mount. This is the original design from Tech 2C. Four M3 nuts, and those are gonna go in these places where he's provided the uh, nut capture. And we'll get those pushed down nice and flat. Then we're going to flip it over and use M3 by 10 bolts. That wasn't supposed to happen. If you use anything longer than a 10 millimeter uh, bolt there, they'll stick out. Then we can add in the nuts for the hot end clamp. So those just go in these slots right here. Then we can take our V6 style hot end. You'll need two in three by 20. Then we're gonna mount two more nuts in here, and this is your sensor mount. So whether you have an inductor that comes stock in the kit, induction probe, or like a BL touch, I've got a file for a BL touch on Prusa printers, you can use either one. With two more M3 by 10. Then we can mount the fan before it gets too busy in there. That's the setup so far. Then we can add our end stop sensor. Two more M3 by 10s. The fan and the sensor do not thread into nuts, they just thread directly into the plastic. So that's nearly complete. The only thing that I'm gonna to add to this is the, there's a snap-on bracket that's gonna snap right in to the x-axis bearings. And on the back of this bracket, I have an Ethernet breakout board. So I'm going to put this together. We have two more locations for M3 nuts. Then we're going to use an M3 by 6. So now we're just going to slip the x-axis carriage onto the rails and then we'll just slide the bearings 
straight into the carriage. And it helps if you might, if you twist it a little bit. And this will just snap right on. So Xyltech will send you uh, all the hardware it is Phillips head screws. I like to go ahead and buy on Amazon just a variety pack of socket head cap screws. And you know, this is like 10 bucks and they have all the different varieties of the M3 hardware. So this is what I recommend.